Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Pray With Me. It's February 14th, 2022, Valentine's Day. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Pray With Me. It's February 14th, 2022, Valentine's Day. I pray you all are having a beautiful morning, reflecting on God's goodness. It's a gorgeous Southern California day. My precious friend, Laura Ramirez, who lives in Colorado, said it was recently negative too. So we can't complain, even though it's so weird to plan sometimes. I started putting all my winter coats away because I'm like, I don't think I'm going to be needing these. But it's still only February, so you never know. Um, Anyway, I just wanted to um, share a little bit from my, you know, morning reading. I read about Pilate and, and Jesus, and it says that he opened not his mouth. And then I was reading a little commentary about that. And the commentary was saying that that was prophetic because the prophet Isaiah, I believe, one of the prophets, uh, Isaiah or Jeremiah, but I think it was Isaiah, said that he would be like a lamb led to the slaughter and he would open not his mouth. And that's exactly what happened. Jesus didn't um, talk back to Pilate. Pilate says, do you know who I am? Do you know what authority I have? And he wants Jesus to defend himself and he doesn't. Or not that he wants him to defend himself. He's expecting him to defend himself and he doesn't. And it just got me thinking about how backwards we are sometimes in our society that we're so quick to defend ourselves instead of letting God do it for us, you know? And I mean, of course there's nothing wrong with defense. I mean, I'm a, I'm a part-time lawyer. I, I have to speak up for my clients' rights. I have to speak up for myself. I have to, you know, talk to judges. Um, but what I mean is, you know, like sometimes on social media, you know, if somebody makes a snide comment, you don't have to be quick to defend yourself. You know, we can take that example from Jesus and know when to speak and when to be silent, when to um, be outspoken, like when he turned over the money changers. But then with Pilate, he opened not his mouth. And so we just need to be mindful of that and that we don't need to defend ourselves because God sees all. Al Roy, he's the God who sees. And then I, I, it really struck me about how Pilate's wife had that dream. And she said, have nothing to do with this righteous man. And so I thought about it. I, I was really thinking about it. Just the Holy Spirit was letting that portion of scripture marinate in my heart, my mind, and my soul. That um, it was a warning. It was a warning. Pilate's wife was warning him, don't have anything to do with this man. And of course, Jesus came to earth to die on a cross we know that but even if it wasn't Pilate, it could have been another you know religious leader that would have condemned him to die but irrespective of that um i was thinking if that brought tension in their marriage you know today's valentine's day because he didn't heed his wife's counsel and husbands and wives you know like Pilate never saw jesus again he died right but he had to live with his wife you know, for however, you know, many years. So anyway, it was just interesting. I was just thinking about that dynamic that I had never thought about before that Pilate did not listen to his wife when she said, I had a dream about him, have nothing to do with that righteous man. And maybe that's why he washed his hands because he wanted to like publicly show his wife. Now I hear you, babe. I'm washing my hands of this innocent man. I don't know, but it just, it was just kind of interesting to me. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you are the God of love, that you are agape, Lord. Greater love has no man than this, than to lay down his life for his friends. And that's exactly what you did, Jesus. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross, our debts to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, we lift up your name on high. We thank you for being love. We thank you for being loving. We thank you for being compassionate, kind, generous, Lord. You are our bridegroom. We are your bride. I love that that is what you call us. You're coming for your bride, Lord. And we just, we, we can't wait, Lord. This world is, is passing away. And just as I read in Matthew's gospel again, recently, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will, will never pass away. And so we know that when we stand on you, we stand on the firm foundation. You are our rock. You are our shield. You are our fortress. You are our, our safe place, Lord, our refuge, God. You are our destiny, Lord. We are destined to be with you forever and ever in eternity, Lord Jesus. And I can't wait. I cannot wait. And so please help us to be bold in sharing your love with as many people as we can until you call us home or we pass away. Because either way, we're going to have an end date. Whether we die naturally or whether the rapture happens, we're going to have an end date and we're going to have an accounting date. So I pray that we would 
stead, be steadfast and hold fast to you, Lord Jesus. We would cling to you. We would love on you. We would worship you in spirit and in truth. You are so worthy. You're Al-Kanah, jealous God. You're Jehovah Nisi. Your banner of love is over us. You're our banner, our victory. You are Christ, the righteous one, the anointed one. You're Yeshua, our savior. Emmanuel, God with us. You're, you're Yahweh Shammah, the present God. You're here in our midst. You are Al Roy, the God who sees. You're Al Shaddai, the God of the mountains. You are Lord God Almighty. You are our master, Adonai. We worship you, God. There's nobody like you. We just want to love on you and worship you and praise you and adore you. And yet we stand in front of you, holy God, and we see how unholy we are, Lord that we need re daily repentance and daily confession, Lord, because we know that we fall short. And so God, just cleanse our hearts. May none of these prayers um, come from, from unclean hands and from a clouded, noisy uh, mind. Give us a clarity of thought, clarity of mind, and forgive us of all of our sins, Lord, of pride, of selfishness, of distractions, of worry, of anxiety. So many things, Lord, that come up and creep up into our hearts and our lives and even idols lord we can all have individual idols whether it's our work whether it's exercise our families um having a perfect home um whatever it is work um you know our gifts our talents those type of things can be an idol lord our relationships even ministry we can even make ministry an idol and you said to to martha 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 you're worried about many things but mary chose the better part and that won't be taken away from her so help us to remember not to be so busy serving that we forget who we are serving you jesus you're the one that we ultimately serve Lord, help us not to rush through our devotions. Forgive us when we just rush through our reading. Okay, I'm done. I got to go. I got to do all the things. Help us to sit and linger and and just enjoy your presence, Father. Who wants to rush through a date or through a special moment, whether it's with a spouse or a child or a relative? You know, if you're with someone you haven't seen in a long time, you relish that time. You soak it in. You enjoy those moments. You don't want to hurry up and rush through it. We enjoy our family, our friends, our church family, God. And um, so help us be like that with you. Not to rush through our moments with you, Jesus. Not rush through our prayer time or rush through our Bible reading and our Bible study. But soak it in. Soak it in, Lord. Just like sunbathing where you just lay there and you let those sun rays touch your skin, Lord. Or when you're in the ocean. I know when I'm there, I'm not trying to hurry up and leave. I want to soak it in as long as I can. Or the mountains or looking at a sunrise or a sunset. I just want to soak it in, God. Even when my kids were little and I would look at their beautiful little faces. I just, I would just stare at them and just think about how beautiful they were. And they still are. But when they're babies, it's just so new and fresh. And so your word says, one thing have I desired of the Lord. That will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord. To inquire in his temple. To gaze on your beauty. To love on you. To worship you. Help us not to rush through our walks with you. But to just pace ourselves. Because being with you, Jesus, is the greatest of time spent. So, Lord, we just pray for, um, we want to pray, pray prayers of thanksgiving. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for love. Thank you for Valentine's Day, Lord. I know for some people it's really challenging, but for others it's a day of, of remembering how special a spouse is or how special a child is or how special a loved one is, God. But for those that are hurting, I, I pray a prayer of comfort, Lord, that they would know that you are their Valentine, Jesus. You're the one that loves them supremely that's true for all of us but for those that are lonely or it, divorced or single or widow just comfort all of those father that just don't feel like they have a sweetheart jesus you see them as their your sweetheart and that is the greatest gift of all lord and help those who are really lonely today just have a, a sense of love maybe a, an old friend will call them or maybe someone will randomly drop flowers off on their porch or give them a note card just help those that are feeling lonely feeling down feeling blue to be lifted up by you today god and they would read the bible they would open it up and remember john three sixteen, god 
Father, I want to pray for my husband, Chuck, Lord, and, and even as today we'll be sharing on Mass Halls a devotion, would you bless our, our, this devotion? Would you anoint our lips? Would you give us the exact scriptures, the exact words, and, and help us to feed off of each other and that we would be an encouragement to every single person that logs into the call, Lord, that it would be a blessing to you um, and that we would do it in a way that honors you, Jesus. And I thank you for my husband, God. Bless him. Bless all of the godly men, all the godly grandpas and uncles and the men out there that that love on their wives and dwell with them with understanding and read the bible with their wives and read the bible with their children and you know what i'm saying lord just the men of valor the godly men like joseph like abraham like peter like paul like john like you jesus who just love sacrificially bless all of these men god I want to pray for the hurting th this morning for the widows who've lost someone recently god this year this this month will be one year since Victoria went to heaven. So I pray for Tony Papalardo and his family that you would comfort them, that they would know that they're not alone, that they will see Nani again one day, Jesus, that she's already in her mansion and she just went sooner than they did, God. So just please pour out comfort on that home, the Miller and Papalardos. And I just pray also for Sergio Palacios as he's been posting a lot that he misses his bride. And I pray for Jessica Kruger that you would comfort her, Jesus, that you would comfort Vivian Regay, that you would comfort comfort Sherry Tima, that you would comfort Kathy and Francie and Chris Huerta and my mom and Glenda and Gwen, all the widows, Lord. There are so many, Father. And just be with them. And the and the men, the widowers as well, missing their bride, Father. Um, just comfort. Pour out your comfort. Pour out your peace. Be with that Hardman family as they lost their little boy, Drake. And for those that are sick with COVID, those that are sick with other diseases and ailments, leukemia, cancer, Tatiana, uh, OC student with leukemia, would you just heal her, Lord? Would this just be part of her testimony and that she would be completely healed and made whole, Lord? You are our shalom. You are our healer you are our peace you are the victor god and i pray against this transgender binary no gender gay homosexual movement that's going on and it's affecting kids from the tiny youth all the way up please god stomp on it jesus just like you you destroyed sodom and gomorrah would you somehow some way show up and destroy these acts of wickedness lord don't allow these agendas and these teachers to creep into the schools lord and i just pray against it father i pray for repentance for each and every prodigal that's on our heart today we will never stop praying for them for adil for autumn mm. i pray for tommy that he would stay sober i pray for calvin and Jeanette that they would repent and come back to you jesus they would know their first love i pray for katie and her husband husband i pray for um each and every prodigal lord you know who they are mark uh brianna just please jesus it's valentine's day it's a day of love may they remember their first love which is you that you died on the cross for their sins and they would come back woo them back with cords of love for talisa lord for rob uh munihan for frank for so many god i could keep going dawn lord gary um just the prodigals, Lord, my nieces, Tishy, Manda, Lauren, Julie, um, Nikki, Nisa, all of them, all of my family that doesn't know you, God, the backslidden Jesus, the those that hate Christians, those that are arrogant, those that are full of themselves, Father, those that say they believe in nothing, Father, I pray for them. Please, God, save now. Hosanna in the highest. Bring them back, Jesus. Please bring them back. We love you. We thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for the gift of love that you gave us love and we worship you and we adore you in Jesus name. Amen.